We have already talked about how we can calculate the delta G for a reaction if I'm given delta H, the enthalpy, and delta S, the entropy. But sometimes it's uh, kind of difficult to come up with these um, numbers. So it would be nice if we had a way of estimating the delta G of a reaction. And so we're gonna be able to do that using um, the delta G of formation. So a formation reaction is a very specific reaction. We talked about it last semester. In reality, the reaction really doesn't mean that much. You just need to remember that uh, delta G of formation is a constant for every molecule. It's something that I can go and look up. Remember, we're using the not, so the not means that we have standardized conditions like 25 degrees C. But the idea is for a given reaction, I usually can go and find these uh, delta G of formations. And by using these delta G of formations, I can actually estimate what the delta G of a reaction. So we use this equation. It looks a lot scarier than it really is. Um, this equation says that delta G of reaction is equal to the summation of the delta G of formation of my products times their stoichiometric coefficient minus the summation of the delta G of formation of my reactants times their stoichiometric coefficient. So one thing that is a little tricky is you gotta watch out for this that the, by convention, the delta G of formation for elements in their reference forms is zero. So sometimes they won't give you the delta G of formation for some species, and that, you know, that can trip you up a little bit. So what do I mean by reference forms of the elements? So they are um, just kind of how you find the elements in nature. So I'll just give you a couple of them, you know, uh, there's, you know, for every element, there is a reference form. But for all metals and transition metals, they're just their monoatomic solids. So the reference form for iron is iron solid. The reference form for sodium is sodium solid. And some of the outliers here um, for halogens, they are the, the diatomic F2 gas, Cl gas, and Br liquid. And hydrogen is a gas, oxygen is a gas nitrogen's gas, and then carbon is in the form of graphite. So if I have any of these species involved in my reaction, the delta uh, G of formation is going to be zero. So the idea is um, any question asker is going to assume that you know that, so it's up to you to identify that. So that's one of the first things I check when I'm given a reaction. I say, are any of my species in their reference forms? And one of the things you need to remember in a reference form, there can only be one element. So if I have two elements, so like right here, carbon and hydrogen, this cannot be the reference form of my element. So I know I need to be given the delta G of formation. So that's something I check. I say, is any of my elements in the reference form? And another dead giveaway is they don't give you the delta G of formation for them because they assume that you know that it is zero. So here I'm given a reaction. Um, I'm given the delta G of formation for some of the species, but I got to remember oxygen is actually in its reference form. So the delta G of formation for oxygen is zero. So that's why they don't give you the delta G of formation here. Once I have this, I then say, what's the delta G of formation of my products? So I have um, CO, um, CO2, so 39, uh, 394.9, that goes here. There's an implied one in the stoichiometry. So remember, you gotta multiply by the stoichiometry. I also have water. Water is a neg negative 237.1. That goes here. There's a stoichiometric two, so that goes right here. I multiply the delta G of formation times the stoichiometric coefficient two. So um, here also, I uh, have two reactants. So I have methane here, CH4. I'm given the uh, delta H of formation of that, um, implied stoichiometric coefficient of one, and then I realize that the delta H of, um, uh, delta G of formation of O2 is equal to zero, so the stoichiometric coefficient really doesn't matter. And so this is one of the main problems. I've actually had students ask me this, where they say, well, you haven't given me all the information to answer this question. And the answer is I do. It's up to you to realize that um, for O2, because it's in its referent form, it's going to be equal to zero. So when I multiply, um, when I do these calculations, I get my delta G of reaction as an estimate of negative 
um, 817.9 kilojoules per mole. So um, because we're putting delta Gs in, all the units of uh, my delta G formations are kilojoules per mole. I get kilojoules per mole out. I have a negative sign on my delta G, so it means this reaction is spontaneous. So by using delta um, G formations, and remember these are just constants, I can go and look these up for most elements, um, I can very quickly estimate what's going to be the delta G of the reaction itself and say, well, is it going to be spontaneous or non-spontaneous? So it's a very quick way of coming up with an estimate for the delta G of reaction.